All right, joining me now to discuss the safe disposal of contaminated uh, products is Obed Beloy. He's the Acting Deputy Director General, uh, Chemical and Waste Management in the Department of Environmental Affairs. Thank you for being with us, Mr. Beloy. So, uh, I, I was just hearing people chatting the other day saying, what, what do we do these thing, with these things as individuals? Uh, you can put them in a dustbin and a homeless person. Can, can then go in. You're looking at the bigger picture, uh, but let's start with what individuals should do. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Francis. I think, uh, as, as you will know, I mean, as you rightly say, a lot of people, as soon as they had, they put uh, their food condemned foodstuffs into the waste bins. That's uh, before many people knew that they could take it back to the retailers. Uh, and then the retailers obviously would have refunded them. Uh, the danger that we face is that those foodstuffs that goes into the general waste bins, they end up into municipal general landfill sites. Mm. If they're not taken by homeless people in, in, in the In the first place, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, so if they end up at uh, general landfill sites, you also find that there are waste pickers there that are picking, and they would have found an opportunity of uh, foodstuffs that they would also have uh, consumed. Yeah. So what now we have done as a department to make sure that uh, uh, we have uh, enough capacity to be able to receive and treat or dispose uh, of all the condemned food staffs. We have communicated with uh, treatment facilities and landfill sites so that when these uh, food staffs are taken to uh, those facilities, they are ready to be able to receive them. Okay, so explain this. So, so the landfill, the people working there, have to now sort through everything coming through to see if, if cold meats are, are part of what's coming in, or is it separated out before? Uh, right now, uh, obviously, most of it has been taken back to the retailers, and then the yeah. retailers obviously would have taken it uh, to cold storage. So most of it right now is at the cold storage, the okay. ones that we so obviously returned uh, to the retailers. Okay, so most of the cold meats are sitting with the retailers right now, so you're directing the retailers where to go. You're making sure that it will be separate uh, at those landfill sites. It, it will not go to general landfill sites. Yeah. It will go to hazardous A landfill special, sites. Yes, okay. and those obviously there is no access uh, for anybody else except the people that are running the facility. The second uh, option for treatment is incineration, where basically uh, they are burning uh, at 700, 800 degrees Celsius to, yeah. be, to be able to destroy that. There is no access uh, for you and I or general public uh, to those facilities. Have the retailers told to hold on to the goods and have they now been informed of, of this? Is, is it very clear for all retailers across South Africa? Well, well, the companies that are involved have already inquired with the different facilities. So the different facilities approach the department to say, because when we issue a waste management license, we give them the conditions of what type of waste they can be able to receive. Yeah. So we have relaxed some of those conditions to make sure, for example, some of the treatment facilities will not be allowed to treat uh, food waste. But at this time, because of what we're facing, we have relaxed that condition. But my question is, do the retailers know what to do right now? The, 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 the biggest companies, like your Tiger Brands, they would know that they, can, they cannot take it to general yeah. landfill sites. They have to take it to hazardous landfill sites or incinerators that will completely destroy the foodstuffs. Is this good enough? Because it comes days after, I remember on the first day, people were saying, okay, so they were told to put it in separate packets and, and move it aside. Uh, there, there was no plan from day one. And, and there are people with uh, this stuff in their homes, putting it in dustbins. They're, they're probably small businesses across this country who aren't being told about these amazing landfill sites. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's small businesses obviously would also have to return it uh, to the, because the small businesses are not held responsible for the disposal. Remember, the producers will be the ones, like yeah. Tiger Brands, will be the ones that are ultimately But I'm saying, are you giving them enough information that they don't just go and throw it in a dustbin? No, they know. We, they, Are you they, sure? They, they, certainly, there is information. Because I don't know as an individual, uh, you well, know, how, for, how for would informal uh, people in, in small shops know? Yeah, they, that, that's where, yes, you're right, that's where the problem was. The small people, uh, small businesses, because there was not a lot of information. Most of them, unfortunately, put the foodstuffs into general waste uh, landfill site. What they're supposed to do, as it was announced, they're supposed to take it back to the retailers, they get refunded. The retailers know that they're supposed to take it for storage yeah. so that it does not end up where it's not supposed to be. 
so can anything be done about the, the contaminated products that's already gone to the, the general sites? We, we, we are in conversation. We have uh, contacted the South African Waste Pickers Association uh, to make sure we have assisted them, obviously, with a statement to make sure that the people that are affiliated to them know the dangers that they are facing at landfill sites. Yes. So even the waste pickers, we have made sure that we contact their association so that they know that there is this danger. They must stay away from condemned foodstuffs. Okay, so this is formal waste pickers, not yes. people who just go and, and look for things at, at waste sites. Well, they are affiliated. It's people, uh, but they have an association that they are affiliated to. Okay. Yeah. Again, is it not too late? Why, why is this happening days and days later? It, it happened immediately with us. I mean, maybe the communication, yes, came it a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But... With but communication the is the key so that people know what to do. For the facilities, we communicated immediately. Okay. That they know that they can be able to receive. So the conditions that they're given have been relaxed so, so that we don't have, if this waste was sent to them, they would not have packed it and waited for us to give them uh, approval. Already they have been communicated, they were told about the approval. We communicated with the provincial departments as well. We communicated with municipalities, the environmental health practitioners, so that the message goes around to improve, obviously, the, the communication. All right, finally, we've run out of time. What, what happens to a piece of polony that lands up at these special sites? And, and is this uh, comprehensive enough to, to really try and, because and, now we know the source, to try and crush this epidemic? Yeah, uh, the, we have incinerators, as I indicated, uh, that run at temperatures of 700 to 800 degrees Celsius, so it will certainly destroy it. The, destroy anything. It, it yeah. would, yeah. And then the, 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 the landfill sites are specially engineered as well. Uh, so that all the hazardous uh, f uh, waste are properly contained.